Okay, um, absolutely delighted once again to be joined by the one and only Fleetside. Uh, hi there, how, how's it going, buddy? All good there, Paul. All good. And your own self. <laughs> well, yes, it's doing absolutely great. Um, I was just about to ask you though, um, the name Fleetside. Where does that come from? Right. So, so my my uh, given name is Mark, very much like Mark Hodnot. Yes, we've already got a Mark and a spectacular one at that. So. Back when they were uh, handing out uh, these handles, or everybody had a handle to do with uh, making a murder, uh, I went with Fleetside. That uh, for me came from the Hot Wheels, uh, wow. the little Mattel Hot Wheel, one of my favorite Hot Wheels. And uh, back when I was a kid, 1969, we're talking there. But uh, anyway, that's where that name uh, came. It seemed like a good thing at the time. That's what I went with. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, uh, I, I just assume that, that you, you you drive a fleet side vehicle. <laughs> no, I got a I got a uh, an analytic pursuit vehicle. I have to send you a, a picture sometime. But it's a uh, yeah, big honking uh, Yukon uh, with uh, you know black. Uh, yeah, I'll I'll send you a picture sometime. Is is that the big the big SUV? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you got one of them. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. beauty. Yep, yeah, they yeah, are massive. Good. They are massive. That's so that you can chase and arrest uh, analytic criminals. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, if 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 we went with the name of uh, of my current car, it would be an E two fifty CDI. I had to get rid of the Audi convertible, the the beautiful Audi A five convertible okay. had to go. Yeah. You 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 cannot you cannot put a border collie in the boot of a convertible. <laughs> No, no. <laughs> so yeah, it had to go. So I've got a, a nice Merc estate. But anyway, it's uh, well. It, it, I, I say I've got the wife drives it. You know, it's it's her car. When, when, whenever we get, uh, we, we, we've got a carriage. But whatever whatever I get new is hers, and whatever we right. get new that that's, that's hers is hers. Full stop. You know. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. As it should be. <laughs> according to yeah. them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Anyway, no, uh, the fleet side, it was a, it was quite a, it, it's quite a famous, famous truck. Is it a Chevrolet? Have I got that right? Yeah, the, the original, uh, the fleet they side, go back a few years. yeah, go back to this early 60s kind of, and, mm -hmm. and then Mattel picked up on that badging when it did it, so it was just a toy car in 69, yeah, but wow. yeah, the fleet sides go back, I think the early, early 60s, somewhere in the mm -hmm. late, uh, late 50s. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. Anyway, um, we're, we're digressing. We're here to talk about, obviously, um, I, I've already read through. Um, you sent me a follow-up to what we were talking about the other day. Um, and, and I must admit, I did, uh, I did have a, a wee laugh at uh, some, some, some of your... It, it, can you see that okay? Yeah, I can see it, yeah. You, so you, well, in that case, then, hopefully... Yeah. Hopefully, yep. so can everybody else. So this is Fleet Side's analytic antidote. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you talk about the Greenfields model and the four protocols provided a proposed solution to the malaise addressed in the earlier paper, following the adage, you shouldn't raise a problem for which you cannot suggest a solution. You see, while Rome is burning, I thought I would play on, <laughs> which, yep. which, which immediately I like because, you know, Rome, uh, you know, apparently Nero fiddled while Bo by Rome, whilst Rome was burning. But uh, did he fiddle or did he play a bagpipe? Yeah, and that's that's a that's a that's an interesting question whether uh, whether there's a Scottish influence to Rome in there. Or, uh... Yeah, <laughs> I, I suspect he probably did bagpipe because I don't think that the fiddle was invented way back then I, I think that's yeah it could, could well yeah. have been a bagpipe an early an early wind instrument with a with yeah. a fixed reed inside so, it, some people know. tell it as a flute and uh, some yes. as a violin uh, I don't know there are different versions there's a famous painting and whatnot mm -hmm. but in my sense there is yeah Rome is burning we've got a serious issue going yes uh, exactly. that we're that we're trying to touch with this uh, the, the contents of this and and that also uh, will uh, can be used in the in the Avery case similarly. Yeah, yeah. So I'll just carry on. The, the Greenfields model: healthy society depends on people and its institutions analyzing objectively, avoiding the otherwise natural course of analyzing to someone's advantage. In that regard, 
in my submission, today's society is on life support, if not dead. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so we're suggesting there that we're considerably adrift of what our institutions are representing they stand for and are yeah. to stand for for their terms of reference. And in an earlier presentation, we had gone through uh, a number of them, we looked at their terms of reference, what they stand for, what they're to be doing, and and observe the delta or the drift yep. in, uh, yeah, in the revolution. Although there is no quick fix, the Greenfield model, Greenfield's model, is proposed as an antidote to um, sheeple yep. syndrome that has so pervasively under overtaken our public institutions and the public mind. And that has quite evidently run amok in Manitowoc. Right. So, uh, <laughs> and this is where in our, I think our last uh, podcast, uh, Millbilly was mentioning that uh, I was suggesting he was a one man SWAT team, but he's in behind the lines trying to talk to people and he was referring to them as sheeple. That's, that's quite often a, a, a descriptor a combination of a contraction of sheep and uh, people obviously but um, <laughs> the notion that the public mind is uh, relatively docile and uh, like a lamb to slaughter is oh, uh, well, yeah. pretty quick to grab whatever's handed to them and go with that rather than critically think for themselves which is juxtaposed to where truthers are true true long before i heard the words making a murder i had witnessed mainstream public dialogue disintegrating to the preference for comfort in easy cell logic. I realized that our governments, our courts, our police, our academia, and our mainstream media all needed to be propped up with a healthy dose of analytic rebar to establish the backbone of integrity. Hence, my decision to simply turn an analysis, analysis, uh, right yeah, analysis of analyses, yeah. Yes. Um, one could check fallacious mainstream argu argumentation for yeah. the ingredients essential to analytic integrity and note any diversions or shortcomings. This will enable us to extend our reply be beyond you are wrong to you are wrong and here is why. And you, had, you, and you had better either change your position or rewrite the fundamentals of integrity. Yeah. So the so the thought there is you you can, uh, as a simple exercise, look at uh, what's required, the essential ingredients, to be able to assert that you've got uh, uh, objective analyses, and that's an age-old framework. So you take that framework and you compare it to the argument that's being presented uh, for consumption, and you note the shortcomings, and so you point that out to the mm -hmm. uh, whoever that is, and uh, yeah, so forth. So it's a it's a bit of a, um, a standard against which you can verify. So it seems like an easy enough. Uh, it, it's a very common sense piece of argumentation. Nothing deep in there. Uh, the, the the standards of objective analytic inquiry or, or proper scientific method go back millennia. Yeah, uh, I was going to say. I, I, I think it, the better better informed you are in any argument that you know the more you can sort of counteract this argument that you know all oh, they wouldn't do that and it's like yeah uh, yeah they did they did back in you know in this case in this case in this case and yeah that was something that the dude was 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 always very keen on you know to uh, you know to stress the the fact yeah. that the more you know you know in, information is power isn't it you know it's uh, yeah yeah he, he bravely and your own self too, Paul, and and more and more truthers are are, are going beyond the standard uh, convention that they're allowed to that, that society suggests is is right think and uh, is critically thinking beyond that. Yeah, beyond the institutions and whatnot. So sure, very okay. important. Uh, so here we go. Beyond the obvious challenge, we have sheeple everywhere to convert like one of those zombie movies, <laughs> I also started to consider the wide expanse of analytic application that must be confronted. We have vast fields of analytic disciplines throughout the private sector, the public sector, science. In considering the analyst, I also realized there are individuals analyzing for themselves. There are organizations as analysts, 
presented a corporate position and we have entire societies as analysts analyzing world affairs. This surfaced the need for three levels of analysts, the three analytic horizons. Wow, that's uh, right. So the so so to, just to unpack that a little bit, obviously, if you're going to analyze analysis, analytic application is per pervasive throughout many disciplines in our society, and and so so right at the gate, you you have this issue where you have to cover uh, from soup to nuts. You've got to cover law, you've got to cover uh, science, you've got to mm -hmm. cover uh, political science, history, et cetera, et cetera. And, police investigation. Um, so analyses are used for the cornerstone of our institutions in many different uh, disciplines. So you've got to cover the breadth of disciplines. You've also got the issue where uh, different this, this idea of different levels. So you have individuals mm -hmm. analyzing for themselves and you've got corporate positions uh, where, where, where companies or groups represent an analysis as being correct. And you've also got this situation where we're uh, trying to figure out where the world is going and looking on the world stage. And uh, so you've got these three different uh, analytic horizons. And the, the last point is the sheer number of people that mm -hmm. are engaged in analysis and uh, perhaps uh, using it inappropriately. So you got to have to unpack all that when in, in developing a model. Sure. So one, one up. There must be a light in there. It's a too much. I don't see what's going on here. Oh, here we go. Uh, I think I've maybe gone past something. Have I? Ah, I suspect it's not. It's not all. Here we go. I got so far. Um, Okay, I think it's only converted something. So let's have a look and see if I've got it elsewhere. Let's go with this one, shall we? Let's go on here. Got a, a page issue, maybe. Yeah. Right, get the first part right <laughs> it, it did the first bit didn't it yes um yeah. and that's okay. the top of the next page yeah there we go there we go okay. yeah here we go here we go um well the, that's as far as we've got then with the analytic horizons so apologies for that it, it seemed as if the uh converting it to a pdf in adobe it worked so far and then it stopped so anyway um if i'll just carry on from here if that's okay with you yep. putting all this all of this together the greenfields model is that copyrighted yeah and i'll, I'll touch on why okay. that yeah okay. provides a framework for analysis of analysis that encompasses the three horizons referred to as programs with each program comprised of eight modules covering the breadth of disciplines, yielding three times eight, 24 modules of analytic fun. Now this is gonna be good fun. The result is presented at your website with, with dribble, dribble? Yeah. Dribble on the you derivation. Mean, you, mean, you mean like Officer Dibble? <laughs> <laughs> on the okay. deriv de derivation, derivation, sorry, of the framework from first principles and available to download at no cost is a booklet on the model. I'll let you take over. Yeah, so so the idea there, I, I've got the modules set out in the, in the three programs and uh, it's available for anybody who wants to consult it. Uh, the, the reason for the copyright that uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get into there is yeah. to uh, consider a future uh, Institute to, to sort of preserve the material for availability for an analysis of analysis institute, sure. and uh, 
then I get into the why the no cost. And, and there's an extremely, as you read that, we'll see there's an extremely important point behind uh, uh, not attaching objective analysis to money in any way. Well, I'm happy for you to read that if you like. Okay, so okay, so I'll just I'll read that uh, para then uh, yeah, the cost uh, part brings us to a key point. The intent of the Greenfields model is to provide a reference for objectivity and analysis, which inherently precludes attaching it to money in any way. Rather, the intent and the reason for the copyright is to preserve the material for any eventual institute and analysis of analysis institute. Also, for reasons the model can uncover, such an institute would have to be one of the people for the people, not one of those government or privatized policy think tanks that establishes the conclusion as their premise and then works the argumentation backwards. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that is in vogue these days are, uh, are policy think tanks. Sure. And uh, they, they, they're pervasive. Now, some of them go back, way back. So the, the, in the United States, the uh, Council on Foreign Relations, for example, I believe goes back to 1924 and its first order of business was to establish the, the League of Nations, uh, which, which flopped through the, the, the subsequent decades as the masses internationally kind of turned that off. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and one of the challenges in establishing a League of Nations or what we have today, the United Nations is the notion that you in order to have a central authority, you have to subvert the authorities of the countries around uh, around the world to have yeah. them fit into the mosaic, you know, to 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 march to that different uh, drummer. Mm -hmm. So uh, one way the melees is taking hold is to have these external, uh, as if we've outsourced our policy functions, foreign policy functions. And um, we think of these institutes as objective, mm -hmm. and uh, my submission they're not objective. Um, this is this is part of the challenge, and something we have to watch out for. Sure, I'm going to let you take over from here. And... Okay, so, so uh, yeah, incidentally, the term greenfield. So greenfields comes from the name itself, comes from a pub in Ottawa. Wow. Oh, I where, that idea. <laughs> where, that's right. I thought that would that would get you. Where too many night was spent framing the framework. Uh, so, um, yeah, there was an old table at the back of this pub in Ottawa here, uh, Greenfields, and uh, papers strewn out all over, and 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 beer flowing, and uh, creating frameworks. And the product is in in what you've. Uh, I don't know if you scroll down, you can see the. Sure. Uh, let's see if that comes up there. There's basically the eight modules, the uh, well, the three programs, the eight modules, and then each one has uh, five sections. So I'm not sure if that's going to scroll on your screen there. Uh, well, it's all coming up here. We've got the uh, okay, you got it. The, the individual, the system, the meta system. Is is that coming up for yep, you? That's it. Yep. Uh, okay. Yep. So I, I I've not seen it on the screen here. But, oh right. Uh, oh, hold on a sec. Then hold on a sec. Let, let me make sure that it's coming up because I need to make sure that people can see that. And it could be that, it, that I've got it on a different screen. So just bear with me and just make sure. Yeah, let me just click on that one because if you can't see it, chances are the yeah, that's listeners it. can't. So I do apologize for that. So those are the those are the three programs, the individual system, the meta system. You've got eight modules, calculation, validation, estimation, supposition, determination, observation, interpretation, and reconciliation. So wow. those are the common common domains of, of analysis. Uh, so you've got all eight there. And then the word archetype is mental model, but it's just a, a manner of thinking. So these are your the, the, the eight uh, disciplines. Uh, and then, uh, if you scroll down a little further, sure. each... I, was, I was just going to say though that yeah, I, I, I love the I love the word reconciliation, or as, as we would describe a, a Beethoven sonata as uh, the um, you've got the exposition, the development, and the recapitulation. <laughs> well, we could add another mo module for Beethoven. Okay, <laughs> of a musical, an, an M nine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then each uh, each one is covered. So what I do is I treat uh, the five sections there. We look at uh, the procedure that's applicable, the method, the strategy, the principles. Um, we look at the factors that are engaged. So um, if you think of individuals or organizations or societies, uh, there are a lot of 
uh, foibles in there. So human sure. factors, system factors, meta system factors that uh, fly in the face of objective analysis. And so those are uh, treated in, in S2. Uh, we have our analysis of analysis. So the ability to put your framework, whoever's supplying uh, whatever their hypothesis is and claiming to be a, a bona fide objective analysis put it against the uh, template to see how, how it measures up. There are some case studies in there that um, uh, many of which people would be familiar with that uh, further uh, provide context on that uh, area, um, that uh, discipline. And uh, some references, materials that you, uh, you know, if you wanna go and research. And this is the part where, uh, uh, you know, it's been around since the beginning of time and simply drawing on standard best practices. So, so, so in, a, in a nutshell, what I'm saying is the standard best practices are known. They've been out there. That's not a question mark. Yeah. What is the question mark is our application where we suspend use of those known tools in favor of a preferred outcome and sort of uh, blur the boundaries of integrity on, on analysis. And that's where we're going astray. Yeah. Well, you carry on, pal. Okay. Uh, okay. And I, I, I'm glad I'm glad I've got it up for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's important to note beyond the framework, the meat and the sandwich is pre-existing pre stuff, well-established be best practices developed by humanity through time, much of it long before I appeared on this earth, long before corruption in Manitowoc became their main sport. Uh, as such, the Greenfields model is more, it is, it, it should say, is a little more than such as agree, is a little more than a a sorting mechanism, uh, or is more of a yeah, is more of a sorting mechanism than a than a new idea. I think there's one little area in there where I had a, a home brewed, but uh, the whole uh, the whole framework is uh, established best pra practices that we all know and love. Right. Uh, so, for example, in reviewing analyses of the Stephen Avery case, we have analyses of individuals. You've got uh, police investigators, lab technicians. Uh, Sherry Colhane, for example, yeah. the DA, Kratz, um, the judge, Willis, or uh, others. Um, we have system analyses, so those of the, of the counties, uh, the, uh, so then we got Manitowoc and Calumet. Yeah. Uh, you've got the courts, the court system, uh, which includes the, 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 the circuit court and the appeal court at this point, and uh, Brendan Dassey went all the way up to the Supreme Court. Um, and then you've got the mainstream media, various detachments uh, locally and broader than that. So in the earlier podcast, we touched on the meta system and considering the various orientations of governments, courts and media around the world. Remember, Paul, you were asking about the uh, jur different jurisdictions and in, uh, in Holland, for example, where yeah. three judges are appointed. Um, and in Canada here, we appoint judges not to a case, but uh, they are appointed to a position. In the United States, some of these judges are uh, political figures they're voted in. Yes. Uh, so it's a, these are obviously three different uh, concepts of, of uh, the conduct of law. And, uh, uh, and, and at some point, we'll have it out as to uh, which, one's, uh, which one's the best. But oh. uh, so the, the, table, um, the table below then just simply puts those into the, uh, you know, the respective modules. So your P1s in there are the, the individuals, the P2s are the groups, P3s are the, the broader pictures that we talked about. And these are just examples. So the idea is if you have any particular, say Governor Evers has a, a position that he uh, brings forward, that's P2 M8, you go in there and you uh, use the frameworks in there to test against uh, what he has to say and see if the, if it measures up and are there any shortcomings and how uh, how appropriate is it as an objective analysis or is it sort of political wish thing? Sure. Uh, so the model uh, was completed back in 2015, which without my realizing it coincided with two events that are significant to us. The first was uh, the airing of uh, on Netflix of Making a Murderer. I think in, in 2015, I probably didn't know what Netflix was. Yeah, uh, but uh, if I understand correctly, making a murder, I think uh, late in 2015 first yeah. aired, and then um, uh, which is the subject of these podcasts. Uh, another big event at that time is Agenda 2030, which was wow. signed by 192 countries around the world. 
um, which is in the process of impacting all of us. So this is where um, internationally we're going through quite a metamorphosis right now tied to Agenda 2030 and the World Economic Forum in Davos uh, to do with the Great Reset. So you'll see a lot of, uh, in, the, in the larger picture, a lot of uh, transition happening while people are focused on other things, there's uh, some major change coming. And, um, uh, and, and that'll continue the Agenda 2030, obviously, for another nine years. Um, so it seemed to me that a framework for analyzing analysis was timely after all. Yeah. And this brings us to the four protocols. So in listening to the various analysts advancing their points beyond the need to separate fact from fiction, I noticed the further need to categorize contextual orientations. The various well-intending analysts were arguing from different schools of thought based on their horizon of inquiry. The mainstream practice of simply regurgitating and further advancing right think is the pervasive practice in the interest of accuracy and efficiency in debate, it is important that those professing an analysis as true confess the limitations of their context, their thinking bubble. So uh, I'll go on to say that uh, mainstream media that we've been rather critical of is, um, is a protocol one, and I'll explain what that is. Sure. But uh, what every newscast, every mainstream newscast should start with the preface, this is a protocol one news program. Yeah, to situate the boundaries that they observe uh, within their uh, reporting and analysis. So the four protocols is a taxonomy that categorizes people's belief systems in regard to their self-permitted analytic content. And I do that with a simple number, one, two, three, or four, which indicates their horizon of inquiry. So a protocol one describes an analyst who absorbs the mainstream official narrative as presented, whether that be from their government, the mainstream media, the courts, their academia. Protocol one aligns with how society is supposed to think according to those selling right think. So this is where, the, this is the, where society is uh, encouraged to think. And the mainstream media will push the right think, and it will also chastise those who think beyond right think. Those are the two rules of today's mainstream media. Uh, there are no conspiracy, uh, sorry, sorry uh, protocol one aligns with how society is supposed to think according to those selling right think. Nothing mm -hmm. going on here, move along, is the operating hypothesis for protocol one analyst. Uh, so these sheeple that we talked about are absorbing that protocol one. There are no conspiracies and they work very hard to shut down any notion of a plan that is beyond the confines of their bubble. They enjoy citing sources from institutions that suffer the same malaise as they attempt to spin an impenetrable cocoon around their logic. So the, the, the problem with protocol one and, and the, the sheeple that we talk about in the mainstream programming and where our institutions are pushing us is um, you can't go too far off script. And, and so they try to protect that with, um, uh, with these simple logics. Now, protocol two, on the other hand, so, so this is where we've got to test the DNA of truthers right. um, because something is causing them to think beyond the mainstream narrative and mm -hmm. to question what's going on, to think critically. Uh, there was a time decades ago when I think our forebearers would have suggested that's exactly what a healthy society is to be doing, mm -hmm. not, to, not to be spoon-fed uh, Kool-Aid from its, uh, its institutions and believe whatever's handed to you. That's going to send you on a path that uh, isn't in your interest and, and sort of think critically is, is, is important and that's where truthers come in. Now, so protocol two, uh, so there's, there's three other protocols, two, three, sure. and four. Protocol two describes an analyst who through lengthy discomfort with protocol one has been brave enough to look beyond the confines of the protocol one official narration to pursue potential explanations of cause and effect in the larger world around them. So they sort of, I think where the truther gets started, they, they say, you know, this official narrative uh, does, not, uh, does not measure up. Mm -hmm. uh, it, and, and, and is there another way to explain all these data points uh, beyond, is it simply coincidence or is there some cause and effect that we should be looking at? So a protocol two then 
uh, looks at the larger world, but what happens is they break out of that bubble at protocol one and they go into a new bubble, which is larger called protocol two. Yeah. So protocol two, um, in addition to consider considering protocol one theories, the analyst expands context to include those larger organizations known to exist that compete with our official institutions for ownership of the public mind. The thinking here is that there may be a conspiracy of major interest groups that interact with the official institutions. And so quite often what happens, yeah. uh, the, the protocol two will start, they'll look at uh, yeah, the industrial military complex, big tech, big pharma, petroleum industry, uh, Monsanto, uh, you know, there's uh, a number of, uh, they, they look for the explanation at that larger, uh, at that larger level. And uh, to gain an undue influence that benefits them at the public expense. So we know that these organizations are out there competing for supremacy and uh, are not necessarily going to stick to the analytic truth and selling their wares. So we have to be at least uh, cautious as truthers to uh, what their agendas will be. Uh, now, Protocol 3 describes an analyst who, through more lengthy discomfort at Protocol 2, has attempted to seek explanation in the even larger world. Uh, the thinking here is that there may be a conspiracy of, and quite often they'll cite uh, the Illuminati, the elite families, uh, uh, larger banking groups um, that have positioned bias in the lobby interests that have captivated the minds of the Protocol Tours. I'll, I'll unpack that. Um, and, and so you've got to, quite often you'll hear the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the Bilderberg Group, other central bankers, uh, the Gates family, the Clinton family, George Soros. Uh, you'll see analysts yeah. in uh, Protocol 3 referring to these larger interests uh, as if to suggest that those are the interests that are restatusing re uh, the lobbyists at Protocol 2 that are uh, creating what we see on the ground. So, so the, the thought is that, that uh, you're, you're now getting into, but what's happening is the, the truther expands their horizon. They knock their nose on, on what they think is intuitive and then they expand and they get to protocol three. Um, similarly, by extension, there's a protocol four, um, obviously uh, given that it was a four protocol system, but this uh, describes an analyst who through lengthy discomfort at protocol three progresses to think beyond the elite players that I mentioned, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the Bilderbergs, the central bankers, et cetera, those in the city of London, um, to consider the age old central network. So you'll hear them referring to groups like the Jesuits, the Crown, the Freemasons. Well, uh, I, 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 the, love, I love the Freemasons, you know, I'm a member. <laughs> and and, and, I, would, I, would, I would just like to add, add at that point there that, that there are times when we can consider ourselves the Illuminati. There's also times when we are definitely members of the inebriati. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the, the beauty of the, so the Freemasons as an example, given yes. that one up. Yeah. Obviously, um, that's an example of a club that touches down um, in local communities, but it's a high level club. Mm -hmm. So if you look at uh, Al Gore, for example, pushing uh, the climate change agenda as a 33rd degree Freemason. Yeah. And, and, and a lot of uh, in Freemasonry, what, what, what he would have uh, is compartmentalized. So the further you go down in the haystack, the less they know about what's happening at the higher level. And uh, at the 33rd degree level, you've got some pretty serious players that are uh, shaping yeah, yeah, agendas yeah, in the yeah, international. Yeah, this is yeah, this is where they play with the analytic. Uh, yeah. I think yeah, some, some, something like more than 50% of the American presidents have been Freemasons. And, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's, that's it. it. Yeah. So this you would want to know, certainly the Bush is George uh, Herbert Walker Bush, his father yeah. Prescott Bush yeah. uh, and George Walker Bush. Those are... Uh, now, Prescott Bush was a banker for Hitler, and, um, and the Bushes came to America. Uh, I think Prescott Bush was involved in uh, pushing Nixon against uh, Kennedy in the 1959 election. Uh, but, and, and we'll talk about George Herbert Walker Bush a bit, but another 33rd degree Freemason. Wow. Um, and, and as a president of the United States, you'd want to know uh, where their allegiances lie. Are they first and foremost exercising the Constitution of the U.S. as a president should, or are they um, 
part of a club that has tentacles and objectives otherwise. Sure. So this paints the picture of expanding horizons of analytic inquiry that people learn through experience. Using this terminology, the epitaph sheeple applies to blind protocol wonders. Mm -hmm. The mainstream media exists to create and protect protocol one. So all of your mainstream programming, the, the one that I think on our podcast, uh, there was a consensus that it was very uncomfortable to yeah. turn on the main, mainstream media. Um, but if you're going to the mainstream media for your intel, then that would be uh, protocol one. And, and we referred to that as news programming of a different type. Yeah. Um, so the, the, the reason, reasoned motivation at protocol two is often money. So we, we th uh, so the thought there is that uh, these these larger organizations or lobby firms uh, vie for profitability. So for example, the industrial military complex would have a vested interest in war because there's money to be made. Sure. And and so uh, uh, yeah, so it, it's usually on a money footing at uh, protocol two. Uh, another would be big pharma would have an interest in selling pharmaceuticals, yeah. whether you need them or not, so that, that, that there's money to be made. Now, I'm not suggesting any of these are right or wrong. This mm -hmm. is just a calibration on where various analysts position their, their mindset. Sure. Uh, so the, um, you know, protocol one thinking, uh, yeah, are, are, uh, man uh, are manipulating to get rich. The uh, motivation at Protocol 3 and 4 span decades, if not centuries, of abolitionary control. So, for example, the Rothschild banking family has been center stage in controversy since the mid-1600s. Wow. So, uh, the original Amschel uh, Rothschild, I think in the 1650s, was a gold trader and the Vatican banker. And uh, so, these families go way, way back. Obviously, mm -hmm. their, their influence spans more than a their, their lifetime. Uh, the secret societies uh, that Eisenhower and Kennedy referred to in their speeches are, are a protocol four construct. Mm -hmm. And I think what they're getting at there is the, uh, the, the Freemasons. But uh, um, you'll see uh, if you ever watch the speeches of the day, both Eisenhower and Kennedy referred to the uh, secret societies as their major uh, a major, as, a, as a major threat to society. Now that was many years ago, so we're uh, almost 60 years from that. Um, sure. Now it's important to realize the protocols themselves don't demonstrate a protocol is true for a particular event or situation. It simply characterizes the analytic context of those professing that, that analysis as being true. Mm -hmm. So what I'm suggesting, if somebody's advancing a theory and they're trying to explain something and using an analysis to do it, um, that they contextualize, well, how big is your horizon? Have you, you know, are you, are you limiting yourself to protocol one logic? In other words, if you don't hear it on the mainstream media, you're not going to consider it. Um, that's important to know before the person starts opening them up to explain. Sure. If you're thinking in terms of the uh, larger lobby institutions, or are you in the broader, uh, are you open to? So even if you're a protocol four, you're open to uh, just about any, uh, any of the largest constructs out there. That doesn't mean that you, you then determine it's a protocol four situation. You may come back and say, lo and behold, the news was right after all. You know, you, uh -huh. could, you know, you, but uh, you're, so it's, you're not self-limiting in the, in the horizon. Sure. Um, now, um, it's important to realize the protocols, and yeah, don't, okay. Analysts do not jump levels, right? So the learning curve can be longer than the runway of life. So as analysts, as truthers, once you get out of the gate as a truther and you start to opening the, uh, the cranium a little bit, uh, you, you, th this can take years and years, decades of, uh, of learning. And, uh, um, and, and so it's an unfortunate aspect that you may not live long enough to fully understand, obviously, what's, uh, what's going on. Um, so uh, while reality may draw you into the larger protocols, uh, and parsimony, so we talked about parsimony yes. and impact yeah. that may pull you back down, the average human does not live long enough to ponder the various expanding protocols. Thank, thankfully for some of these elite families, we die before our learning curve advances to take <laughs> one. <laughs> but, uh, 
Um, so parsimony, the idea of keeping the arguments simple, uh, if you've got an analysis, you don't need that. Uh, if you don't need to add complexity to explain what's going on, then you shouldn't yeah. err on the side of the streamlining and the simplicity. And so parsimony favors protocol one and too much parsimony uh, has you uh, shutting your mind to what's truly going on. So in the monitoring of those analyzing world affairs, you can stamp a number on their forehead, a one, two, three, or four to contextualize where they are coming from in their argumentation. It's important to note the assignable protocol is regardless of education and work experience. There are very intelligent, very well-educated and very experienced professionals at each of the four protocols. Expanding on the question in the earlier paper, are these experts uh, cited in mainstream programming or are they just further indoctrinated? So, so what you'll find in the mainstream uh, narration and, and evident in mainstream media is uh, the application of experts, but one has to be cautious in bringing an expert on board that you don't have somebody who's thinking beyond the thought bubble that's afforded by the, by the institution. Sure. So they have to be sort of selected uh, based on, on that limitation. An interesting uh, case in point was uh, Christopher Hitchens. I don't know if you ever follow Christopher Hitchens and he's uh, one of the great minds. He's, he's passed on now, but uh, right. he was brought on to some mainstream media program and refused to play the game and tore them apart. Uh, it was the most embarrassing. They had to shut down. The <laughs> 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 but um, <laughs> So, um, uh, so now with the protocol terminology established, should uh, someone say, uh, say to you, you must be a conspiracy theorist, uh, the appropriate retort is you must be a protocol one. So, <laughs> so conspiracy theory is used uh, to, to shut down dialogue as license to shut down dialogue that's yeah. outside your thought bubble. Uh, so a man walks into a bar. I like I like the sense of that. I, I you you've got me you got me I, straight away. I'm pandering to Paul on this one. Absolutely, <laughs> this is not objective. What I'm doing here. I'm okay, playing to your strength. So, I mean, well, mine too. Uh, in, in fact, uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, a man walks into a bar. Okay, I'm out at Greenfields Pub in Ottawa. Canada and proceed to ask random strangers about their mindset with regard to major events. Of course, there are a number of people that don't know what a major event is. So there's a lot of people yeah. that you encounter who um, are wonderful people and, and have wonderful knowledge about wonderful things. They may be able to recite uh, the name of the sports teams and who wears what jersey and what they had for breakfast. And, you know, the, it's yeah. incredible, uh, you know, every... But, but what I'm suggesting there is on, on matters of major import, they may not be uh, following along. And uh, they can regurgitate every detail pumped out in mainstream programming. Typically, I find that roughly 60% of the patrons are protocol one. Right. So that means if I walk up to a random group, that's in Canada, but I don't know that it's dissimilar in, in Scotland or in the US, I don't know, various states in the US. Mm -hmm. um, and this is not a scientific poll, but uh, gut feel roughly 60%. And it's important to note that's a majority. So there's a majority sure. yeah. in the public that are locked onto protocol one. They reflect the mainstream view. And if you probe further on any other protocol discussions quickly become emotionally heated as you are essentially asking them to relinquish the tranquility of their current BS. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> to stretch their cranium, right? So I have had some people literally get up and walk out of the bar. So you should expect that. Um, and without, so anything in the engagement had nothing to do with uh, offending the person or saying anything harsh. All you're doing is bringing in context that reaches outside that bubble and they get emotional. So you, you no longer have rational discussions, you have emotional discussions. And uh, if they don't offer to punch you in the nose, they'll stomp, uh, stomp out of the bar. And you can almost expect that. And that's your 60%. Yeah. But, but is it not a case of, you know, you're saying that rel relinquish the tranquility of their current BS? Um, yeah. 
is is BS not also um, the symbols for something else? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, a little play on. Uh, I thought that. I thought that was a little we'll play stick on with that. that. Yeah, belief system for family belief life. system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, very good. So the trouble with sheeple is, if an invasion force were to ever come to town to rape, pillage, and burn, they would be proudly jumping forward to offer their services as tour guides. This <laughs> propensity for intellectual sellout is like a cancer and insidious killer that I would suggest is very dangerous to the health and sustainability of societal interests. So um, you'll see in the current events, let's say, where people wrap themselves in the, fret and in the flag and are pleased to say, I, I jumped on the bandwagon and I took this step and I, um, and, and really there's um, nothing more dangerous than a, an activist that is stuck in the uh, bubble of protocol one. That's a very yeah. dangerous yeah. formulation. Yeah, uh, we, we, we've got the same, same here. We've got huge divisions between uh, your sort of um, unionists and independent people, that, you know, people that want independent and they're very yeah. nationalistic and they, you know, they, it, it's, 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 it is, it's, it, I, so the, I, so the I Scottish, from, so yeah. Scottish independence, for example, yeah. um, so you're suffering two ways, you got Brexit and you've got Scottish yes. independence, it's a double yeah. whammy. Yeah. Now I would suggest those are topics that are of interest to the center. Yeah. And to understand Brexit, you've got to understand the European Union. Mm -hmm. And uh, 1953 was the inaugural voyage of uh, a group called the Bilderberg Group. Uh, and their job one was the Europe, uh, unification of Europe, which I think came about, uh, uh, I'm trying to think, 96 or some, somewhere in there during George yeah. uh, Herbert Walker Bush's tenure in the US. Yeah. But um, uh, all that to say, these these uh, shifts towards separation and uh, and 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 Brexit or or unification are of tremendous interest to the central bankers. Yeah, there's there's a there's a huge money issue, a balance sheet question for them, and uh, they're not immune to playing in those zones. And if you want to cause people to jump on certain bandwagons to do certain things that are in their interest. This is how you do it, and the mainstream media becomes the uh, delivery conduit for uh, uh, shaping minds. Um, so roughly 30% of the bar patrons are protocol two. So he said 60% were protocol one, the majority. Yep. Uh, and then roughly 30% are protocol two. So they're going to be talking about the lobbyists and uh, the, these, these, uh, the, the, the major banks, the Monsantos, the... Uh, uh, industrial military complex, uh, big pharma, big oil, et cetera. Uh, and, and, and so they are attaching to these companies, the, uh, the, uh, the analytic melees that's, uh, that's got uh, society slightly distorted. Um, they're uh, quick to engage on the antics of those commonly understood larger lobby groups and their lust for money. Now, 7%, um, are in the protocol three category and the remaining 3% are at protocol four. So if I walk up to an individual, uh, well, I'll just finish that pair of the, the, sure. the uh, protocol that applies to an individual is very apparent and is readily assignable within the first beer. Yeah. Picture bar, bar patrons holding a glass, walking around with numbers tattooed on their forehead. So you can keep a magic marker yeah. Here's something to try. You keep a magic marker in your pocket and you're talking to people over a beer and uh, talk about world affairs. And once you get the protocol figured out, reach out and, and on their forehead, draw a number. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, so then and then move on to the next person. So you can you can sort of do your study that way. Uh, remembering that any one protocol may be right in regard to a particular uh, major event. The easier solution might be to simply to stop walking into bars. But uh, so uh, oh, we may very on. well find, and, and we'll get into Avery and, and uh, some JFK example as well, um, but you may well find that after you study the analysis that lo and behold, you've confirmed the official story is right. I think you said, Paul, in one of your original podcasts or years ago, um, if somebody could uh, prove that he was guilty, I would accept that. You know, you're not. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're not immune to hearing uh, either side, and if and if that is where the data fits, then yeah, you'd like to know that. Certainly, that's not what we're seeing. But no, 
absolutely not averse to uh, understanding all uh, all sides. Yes. So the J uh, Avery and JFK. Imagine putting Stephen Avery and, and wow. uh, John Fitzgerald Kennedy in the same. Uh, uh, same line. So extending discussions in the earlier paper with the Avery and the JFK, the protocols would line up as follows. So here's an example in the table of there's your four protocols. Um, in the Avery case, uh, the protocol one mainstream narrative is that Stephen Brendan killed Teresa Halbach twice, <laughs> as set out in the state's two official narratives. Right, and that's what we're to swallow. Yeah. Um, protocol two, the club uh, orchestrated events to have Steve put away and the larger institutions are being simply drafted into submission. So this is, uh, and Dave Bogota did a lot of uh, analysis yeah. and discussion about that, uh, the local club. So there's some feature there that's uh, most interesting, but a protocol two view would suggest that the club is uh, inherently skewing uh, the public mind and therefore uh, uh, Stephen and Brendan are sort of caught in that vortex. I know a protocol three would go a little further and you would mm -hmm. suggest, well, Peg Lautenschlager mobilized uh, the club to shape events that enable the incarcerations um, and uh, have tentacles of influence into the larger institutions. So at a Peg Lautenschlager and her, and her sons there currently, isn't he? Um, yes. Yeah, uh, cool. At that level, you've got uh, a significant reach over a lot of the parameters that we're seeing manipulated. Uh, and uh, collaterally, you're in a network with others that, um, so, so a protocol three would look for that larger uh, influence to, to assign the systemic problem here. And then uh, uh, protocol four, uh, you know, you could think that, okay, senior level uh, masons mobilized a uh, lot. like maybe Peg was a mason, is her son a mason? I don't know. Uh, to use the club to orchestrate the incarcerations to control the larger institutions. So, uh, so again, I'm not saying one's right and one's wrong. I'm just saying if you grab analysts, they're going to fall into one of those four protocols. Yeah, it was, it was something that was shown to me, and um, I was quizzed about this a, a way, way back, um, probably back 2016, 2017. Uh, you, you know, you look at photographs of Herman, Kratz, um, um, you know, um, all, all the main players, um, and, and they've got this big ring on their ring finger of the right hand. Oh, yeah. And, and I was asked about this by Mark Oddie, you know, are these, are these Freemasons? And I'm saying, oh, well, they, they could very well be, you know, Jerry Pagel, uh, yeah. Kratz, uh, Herman, um, I'm, I'm, Mark sent, sent me a load of, load of photos of, of a whole load of them. Um, I'm, I'm trying to think if it was Judge Willis and Jerome Fox, and they all had this, this ring, and it was definitely like a, like a, like a Freemason's fraternity ring. Mm. I mean, obviously, from my point of view here in the Scottish borders, Freemasonry, it's all about the charity. It's all about raising money oh, yeah. for charity. Yeah. But, you know, when you get to higher levels, you know, I mean, mm. when, when you think that, uh, you know, as, as we know, half the uh, over half the presidents of the united states were freemasons you know you, you, yeah listen th 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 there, there could be aspects of, of the fraternity that i have no idea about whatsoever yeah and that goes back uh, to uh, 1786 yes. the origins of the united states so that and 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 uh and that's just for the u.s the, yeah. the, the, the freemasons go back uh, any the most uh i think the greatest transformation was in the 1500s and uh, the Vatican was involved in the Protestant Reformation and all that kind of stuff. There's, I mean, if somebody wants to go back and look at the evolution of the Freemasons and the connections to the Jesuits, it's a fascinating yeah. uh, study area. But for the sake of this sort of thing, we're just suggesting sure. there are, you know, those four protocols. Now, yeah. just on the, just before we clear off that table, if you go oh, to sure. the yeah, yeah, sure. fascination, yeah. you've got... Uh, you know, so, so similarly, and that's uh, that's at a macro level. You've got Oswald as a lone gunman had a bad day and decided to kill the president, uh, which, which <laughs> incidentally yeah, yeah. changed the trajectory of democracy. Um, the the larger school of thought would be organized crime, the mob. So Sam G and Con in, in particular out of Chicago, yeah, uh, retaliated against JFK to change RFK. So his brother Robert was Attorney General. Uh, pursuits in setting up Oswald. So. 
So what they, in other words, that larger thought is the mob got them. RFK was was anchored. The mob actually was instrumental in stuffing ballot boxes. So the story goes to get Kennedy in in 59 and then Robert was uh, chasing after them. But uh, anyway, so that you, you sort of park the theory within the bubble that it's the mob that's doing. Then at yeah. protocol three, three you've got the uh, central bankers instigated a hit uh, and used the mob, Giancana and company as the hit men changing the path of the democracy to favor their, their interests. Now, there were a couple of things going on, uh, a couple of problems they had with Kennedy um, he was, I would suggest he was being the president and was doing, he did have the, certainly in terms of some of these decisions on banking, uh, he had signed executive order 11110, which was to uh, allow the U.S. to print money that would, in other words, they would service their own debt without going through the Federal Reserve. It was basically the death knell to the Federal Reserve that would take out the central bankers. Now, in, interestingly, Lincoln did the same thing back uh, post uh, Civil War, wow. and uh, so. But, but the point is, the uh, there's a huge um, implication had Kennedy continued to live, and Johnson reversed that order as the first order of business uh, on the day of the uh, of the death. Wow. Uh, no, so I'm not saying that's right or wrong. I'm just saying that's a pro that's a Protocol Three perspective. Uh, and then Protocol 4 perspective, you've got the Archbishop of New York, uh, Cardinal Spellman, uh, who was a major political influence and was uh, the Vatican was looking for the Vietnam War and uh, Kennedy was backing away from the Vietnam War. So, you know, uh, and plus they wanted to protect their the Vatican bankers. Now, so again, not, not saying right or wrong or indifferent, but if I talk to analysts, I'll get these different protocols, different schools of thought. Sure. So whatever protocol you select should be able to elegantly explain the coordination required to explain the coincidence, mm -hmm. to, to, to cover the incidents. If you are, um, uh, sorry, if you're right in this pursuit on major events, you will now have a predictive model. You can tell their friends their future. So if you've got uh, whatever protocol you're going with and you've analyzed and you you see what they're doing, you see what the manipulation is, and you can predict that manipulation, you can see what lies ahead. And whether or not you've demonstrated that your model is correct, uh, you still have a predictive model, which is pretty fascinating. And, and uh, like a rabies fest, you huh. will still be ankle bitten by the protocol runners, but remember while they cover their ears, you have, will have told them their future. Uh, so there are events going on today uh, that we can very clearly see the next steps and uh, they're not random. Uh, mm -hmm. Things are unrolling on the international stage completely consistent with plans that were already made public. So uh, there's no mystery in where we're going mm -hmm. as societies. For Stephen Avery, the uh, sign protocol must, be, must explain the sphere of influence required to achieve uh, and so this is just my take, and and Paul, you may have uh, some to add here, or sure, just but the you know the eleventh hour uh, benefit bestowed on uh, Herman and uh, Vogel, wow, the uh, coordinated malfeasance of two counties. So, so you'd have to be strong enough to affect both. You got Manitowoc and Calumet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, coordination of the lab authorities. Uh, yeah. So you'll notice um, they can't go too far out of out of range of the same players that are reused in these various stations to maintain the, uh, the narrative. A limita uh, limitation of persecuting uh, personnel to within, uh, um, uh, personnel to within the, oh yeah, so this is within the inner circle. So they, they can't pull people in from outside. Yep. Uh, the ability to coordinate evidence withhold so the tampering and destruction. Yes. Uh, you'll notice on, um, so there was an old, um, the old uh, expression in, in, in wartime, you know, when you're over the target, when you're drawing fire. Um, I would say the over the target moments here uh, relate to Teresa's DNA and the identity of the RAV. Those, yeah. those to me uh, strike as the rapid fire zones. This is where they are being particularly guarded and they will step outside uh, the equation of transparency, and in fact, will go as far as destroying evidence 
in broad daylight, you know, admittedly. Um, this is quite an aggressive step to take, but uh, yes. um, I would suggest that suggests that the, the DNA is a key is a key question. Um, the support of stand down of the mainstream media, the support of stand down of governments, Evers and company, the further support of orientation of the courts. So to this day, Judge Flowers, um, the preposition of, of victim of the victims estate planning. So one would want to look at. Uh, the preposition on the file. How on earth um, the, the the coincidence, let's say, of yeah. uh, prepositioning uh, to to that event, and um, and the timely availability of facts uh, facsimiles. So there was Carmen Bootwell, yeah. and there was another. I've forgotten her name, um, but there were two uh, specimens of that same MO that were available yes. in the lab at the same time in the hands of the same people. Uh, so, you know, whether there's anything to that or not, these are uh, coincidences. And once these coincidences stack up, uh, you start to, uh, where there's smoke, there's fire. But obviously, from my point of view, I am deeply suspicious of the, um, as you put it, the supportive stand down of the mainstream media. Yeah. So, so would I be a protocol too? Uh, yeah, you you would at least be protocol too. So, at least, so, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, at least yeah, yeah. So truth, oh, or, oh, you, you've you've made me feel good. <laughs> and um, given that you haven't thought about the proto protocols, perhaps yet, um, as you as you go to sleep tonight, you can decide. Well, what number am I? Um, I, I am and, done and, definitely. And that's the whole that. idea of you know when you look at the numbers, you can start yes. to. Uh, see where other people have gone that doesn't mean you yes. should go that just yeah. means uh other learned and experienced individuals uh some stay at protocol one uh some go up to protocol four uh, so not not to say it's right uh just to say that, uh, that, that, yes. that there's those other variants so for for jfk just to draw a parallel there's yeah, nothing sure. new in the avery case that hasn't been handled on the macro level with, with jfk um, the ability to bring JFK to Dallas, that was, of course, um, yeah. Johnson, that was his home turf, so they had to get uh, Kennedy into his home turf. Uh, the, the ability to mobilize key operatives in Dallas uh, to, to, to do various uh, police and, uh, uh, and security, the ability to manage the change in the parade route, so Dealey Plaza was the, was the location of the, of the assassination. And that was added to the parade route uh, days before uh, the, the assassination. So someone had to, you know, if the theory is correct, that it was, uh, uh, it, this would be an interesting coincidence that that, that yeah. yeah. So rather, so what was happening is Kennedy was going from Love Field Airport. He was going to the, uh, through town to the uh, Stemmings Freeway down to the trademark to give a presentation. And um, very curiously, uh, the parade route had shifted to the kill, to the kill zone, sure. which features a very uh, awkward turn uh, slowly past the school book depository. Um, ability to contain and conceal key evidence, the ability to eliminate us, such as key evidence, such as locking the files away for 50 years, right? Shades of Avery. Yes. Um, the ability to uh, eliminate Oswell, the ability to coordinate mainstream media pseudo analyses. We had Walter Cronkite and everybody else out there uh, pushing the lone gunman uh, theory. Mm -hmm. The ability yeah. to align the FBI and the CIA and the subterfuge, the ability to select Warren Commission participants. So the same cronies, one of which was Arlene Specter that came up with the magic bullet theory. The ability to eliminate key eyewitnesses, 140 some odd people killed mysteriously that uh, eyewitnesses to the event and the ability to eliminate on that Sunday morning in police custody, they took out Jack Ruby. Uh, they, they, sorry, they, 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 they took out Oswald. Jack Ruby took out Oswald. And eventually mm -hmm. while in prison, uh, Jack Ruby was taken out. Mm -hmm. uh, so these are, these are uh, coincidences that one would want to piece together. So a question for truthers, what makes you see while others choose not to? For my protocol two friends, I hope the Greenfields model provides some notional context to support you in your quest for that holy grail, the truth. This is no, no time to bring up Monty Python. I wasn't going to mention I was not going to mention it. Yeah, I was, Romans I was, go home. Romans I was going to be. 
for all of my protocol three and four friends, keep on rocking and what used to be the free world. Uh, for my protocol one friends, do not read this paper. That's too uh, too stressful. And uh, to all of you, have a great reset. Ah, so uh, ah, certainly suggest people uh, study what the great reset is, what agenda 2030 is, and uh, where we are headed as a society. Uh, Politside, that was absolutely brilliant. Many, many, many thanks for that. Uh, you know, I'm listen. You've you've done so many great um, presentations, um, and that's just another one. Uh, it, I mean, it just it just makes makes people think, doesn't it? You know, um, immediately I, I'm thinking, you know, where do we put making a murderer truthers? At least at least protocol two, three, yeah, and so four. different. Yeah, different uh, different people in different places. Yes. You know, and, and so not to dissuade anybody who is looking at the, you know, the, down to the brass tacks, we certainly want to know the details. We're very grateful to have all the details of what went on and, and lighting up further alternatives. But if, for example, your mind uh, went from uh, Steve did it to, let's say, Bobby did it or, or Ryan did it or yes. the German did it, or, um, what we have to hoist aboard there is that another individual had a random bad day. Uh, an Oswald moment yeah. and pulled off a caper that uh, benefited. So all those coincidences, right? So if, if all you're doing is uh, focusing on an alternative uh, protagonist to Steve, uh, you're dismissing uh, the lion's share of intrigue. Uh, and you may be right. It's possible, you know, that uh, maybe Maybe one of those people did do it, but all that larger evidence, I would suggest, in, uh, points to a larger operation than uh, simply a person randomly having a bad day. I, I, think, I think you refer to it as parsimony, and I would re refer to it as Occam's razor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you know. yeah. Yeah, that's exactly Occam's razor. It's the same, yeah. same thing. Yeah, to, to yeah. cut out. So the razor is the cutting of uh, uh, superfluous argumentation. Yeah. Keep your keep your theory should be uh, as simple as possible to explain the events without having to bring in next. So cut away the Occam's razor. Cut away anything that's uh, yeah. That's that. That's where that comes from. Yeah. Well, listen, pal. As I say, absolutely brilliant having you having you on. I, I really enjoy your company. I, I, I do honestly, and I hope and I hope the gnarlies go from strength to strength because I've remembered the name. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the gnarlies. That's right. That's you right. Yeah. Yeah. And, play and, in, yep, in Ottawa here, um, or around uh, around uh, different areas. But um, no, we should. Uh, one of the, we'll do one of these again, and we'll coordinate on beers. You tell me what you're drinking, and yeah. I'll have the same thing, and we'll. Yeah. Uh, at least we'll be on the same uh, wavelength, uh, beer-wise, and we'll yeah get into yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, it would be nice to get some of the some of the gentlemen together that uh, discussed yep. the, the last one. Um, yeah, it was brilliant what we had. Uh, so so excellent uh, perspectives all around. Uh, uh, just a fantastic uh, crew there. So we'll see what uh, see if they're up for it. Well, I, th I think that's that's the thing about this community is the fact that it's drawn so many people together that that have got different perspectives, but. I kind of think that most of us are, are kind of thinking in the same same direction. I, I think I think yeah, that there's there, there's a few that that have gone sort of a, a little bit sort of off target um, in in terms of you know um, dare I say it you know the involvement of, of Barb you know as as if she knew exactly what was going on and or did she or didn't she you know it, it, and, and and that's something for, for debate um you know and, and the involvement of Ryan you know how much did he know how much doesn't he know and and his involvement but but I, but I think everybody's kind of heading in the in in the yeah. right direction but but yeah. you know the, the whole point of of your analysis of analysis is the fact that you know you you we, we really can't sort of pinpoint directly right what's going on it, it's just right. you know we we, we, we can especially when we don't have the evidence right yes. so we're yeah and, and this is the first violation violation of sound uh, analyses the first thing you do in a sound analysis is is be transparent as to material and method yeah. And, uh, and you also invite falsifiability. If somebody wants to advance an alternative hypothesis to Stephen, 
uh, in the name of science, they, they should. Uh, and especially when you consider that the energy equations for this notion of burning a, a body uh, in that time, in that location is, uh, yeah. is absolutely absurd. So yeah, um, yeah. Y y it's important that, I, I think, so the truth or community is kind of, I think, in the, exactly in the right direction. Uh, and we don't know what we don't know. We're well, unfortunately, yes. we don't have the information. Uh, that's why if, uh, if Zellner were able to, tr to, to triumph, um, it would open up a lot. And this, this may be the, the major problem. If there were a way to get Steve out such that you didn't open the kimono too wide, they might go for it. Yes. But if you open the kimono too wide, you're going to see some things that you shouldn't see. Yes. And uh, it's, uh, that's, that's why they want to fight this tooth and nail, I suspect. Yeah, I, I, I completely concur with you. I, I think that's, that's very simply put. So anyway, um, I'm going to say cheerio and take the dog out for another constitutional. Perfect. Um, enjoy the rest of the afternoon. It's been yep. absolutely fantastic having you Thanks, on. Paul. And if, if, yeah, and if your other lads there want to get on or, or uh, folks want to get on, uh, by all means, that'd be a, a, a wonderful thing to do. Yeah. I, th I think, uh, yeah. It's, it's just it's just great for the community to keep the uh, um keep on talking until they're yeah walking. that's 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 a great that's a great that's a I, I should remember that one yeah yeah we'll that. <laughs> <laughs> listen catch you 